the following question reads that liquids X and Y do not react with one another. They have identical boiling points. Uh, when a particular volume, so they have uh, first information is that they have identical boiling points. It then states when a particular volume of X is shaken with a similar volume of Y, they form a liquid mixture Z. The average intermolecular forces in liquid Z are stronger than the average of the forces in X and the forces in Y. So what he's basically stating is that initially you had uh, molecules of X and you had molecules of Y and molecules of X were attracting each other and molecule of Y were attracting each other. So they were intermolecular forces between them. But he's stating that the intermolecular forces uh, were weak between them. But when they mixed the two, uh, uh, two compounds X and Y and they ended up forming the liquid mixture Z, uh, so let's mix them up. So here you can see that they are now mixed up and they, found a, they formed this uh, liquid mixture Z. Now when it has formed the liquid mixture Z, the intermolecular forces between them is now much greater. So that is what the question is stating that now the intermolecular forces and the particles are attracting each other with a lot more strength. Now the question is which deductions from the information are correct? The first one is the mixing of X and Y is exothermic. Uh, it is definitely going to be exothermic because exothermic is bond formation. If bond formation is stronger, then that means uh, it's going to be, it, it is going to be exothermic. And I'm going to explain why it's going to be uh, exothermic because uh, remember that the previous bonds, the previous intermolecular forces were weak. So it required very little energy to break those bonds. But once these new bonds are formed and these bonds are stronger, which means bond formation is exothermic, so a lot more energy is going to be given off because stronger intermolecular forces or stronger bonds are being formed. So the reaction is definitely going to be exothermic. The next one is about vapor pressure. The vapor pressure of liquid Z will be less than that of either liquid X or liquid Y at the same temperature. So what is vapor pressure? This statement is also going to be true, but let me explain this. So here I've uh, drawn three containers. Uh, the first one contains X, the second one contains Y, and the third one is the mixture Z where you have X and Y mixed together. Uh, now the question stated that uh, the particles of X are not attracting each other very strongly and the particles of Y are also not attracting each other very strongly. What that would indicate is that they would evaporate very, very easily. So the particles of X, because they're not attracting each other very strongly, they're going to evaporate very easily. And the same would be true for particles of Y. They are going to evaporate very easily as well. Now, in this third container, where you have the mixture of Z, X and Y are mixed together, the intermolecular forces, the question stated that intermolecular forces are very strong, which indicates that they're not going to evaporate very strongly. So if they're not going to evaporate very uh, very easily because the particles are attracting each other very strongly, very less vapor is going to be formed. So what is vapor pressure? Vapor pressure is basically that uh, every mixture reaches an equilibrium and there's going to be some form, some amount of vapor that would be present and that vapor is going to exert a pressure. Now in these two containers, the vapor pressure is going to be high because you have more vapor. So they're going, it, they would be colliding with the walls of the container and they would be exerting a greater vapor pressure. So there's going to be more vapor pressure in this case. So if particles can easily evaporate and they're able to form vapor, then the amount of vapor is going to be higher and the number of collisions that they would be having with the walls of the container and the amount of force that they are going to be exerting, it's going to be much greater. So there's going to be more vapor pressure. But in this case, the intermolecular forces in mixture Z are much stronger. So it's it would be a lot harder for the particles to evaporate. And if it's a lot harder for the particles to evaporate, not a lot of particles would be formed. And if there are fewer particles, then uh, they're not going to be colliding with the walls of the container that frequently and they would not be exerting a lot of force. So this container is going to have lesser vapor pressure. So let's go back uh, and the, quest part, the option two was stating that the vapor pressure of liquid Z would be less than that of either X and Y at the same temperature. So this statement is definitely true. So the first statement was true, the second is true. Let's uh, look at the third one, that the boiling point of liquid Z will be lower than the R of either liquid X or liquid Y at the same pressure. Now, this one is going to be incorrect because uh, in liquid Z, the particles are attracting each other more strongly. So it is more difficult for it to evaporate and more energy is needed for it to boil. So this liquid Z, because of the stronger intermolecular forces, 
uh, it's going to be much more difficult for it to boil. So higher boiling point for liquid Z. So this third option uh, that the boiling point of liquid Z will be lower is this part is incorrect. So only one and two are correct. So that makes it option B.